Hi, my name is Newt Bailey. I am the founder of the Communication Dojo Workshops and CommunicationDojo.com. In this video, I'd like to talk about what does it mean actually to learn connected communication, nonviolent communication? What does that mean? Is it a sequence of tips and tricks, procedures, techniques? And is it anything more than that? Well, as you might be guessing, I'm about to say that it's something more than that. That's not to say that this work does not have many useful tips and tricks for sure. There are all kinds of ways that you can adjust how you communicate just by learning different ways of saying things, uh, different way of ordering the things that you say, just put them in a different order, that kind of thing. And I look forward to sharing more of those in these videos. And what seems most important to me is connection, which is why I call this connected communication. And for connection to happen between people, especially when there is difference, difficulty, conflict, when there is pain, fear, anger, a sense of powerlessness, and many other emotional states, many other kinds of hurdles and obstacles, well, connection is harder to find under those circumstances. It requires connection with yourself from which you can connect with the other person. And when connecting with yourself, what are you connecting with? Because a lot of what's going on with a person comes from years and years of past, let's call it conditioning. The way that you've been trained, the way that you've been raised, the things that you believe about yourself, about other people, about this particular other person that you're talking to right now. Your history, your psychology, your emotional well-being and health in this moment, your, your psychological well-being, mental health, maybe even your physical health, the degree of pain that you're in can affect how you communicate. Which side of bed you got out of this morning can affect how you communicate. And all sorts of beliefs and assumptions and um, philosophies, mental models, etc., etc., judgments about the world, and so on and so forth. Habits of mind, comparing yourself with others, criticizing yourself, criticizing others, being quick to say no, being too quick to say yes, making demands, making commands, telling people what they are and what they must do, and so many other habits of mind, which become habits of speech and habits of communication. So what I am passionate about and what I share in my workshops and in my work in general is something which is beyond simply tips and tricks. It's about looking more closely at yourself and looking more closely at what it means to be in connection with another person, to be in relationship with another person. And that inquiry can go pretty deep and be revolutionary. It can change a lot. And my belief is that to really have the kind of communication that leads to the kind of relationships that we're all looking for, that we're longing for, relationships that are centers of joy, places to which we bring our joy and enjoy the joy of others and then give each other joy too, in whatever ways. If we really want those kind of relationships and the joy that comes from those, then something more than just the tips and tricks are gonna be required. It's gonna require some attention. Attention to the things that you're studying, videos, books, audio, whatever it is that you're studying attention to yourself, what's going on, not just up here on the level of what you're thinking, very important, often very valuable, sometimes quite damaging and dangerous, but not just attention to what's up here, but attention to what you are feeling, attention to what you are longing for. So attention to more than just the thought sphere, very much a sphere in my case. Attention to the same things in the other person. What are they feeling? 
What are they longing for? What are they seeing when they see you? What are they hearing when they hear you? What are you seeing when you look at them? What are you hearing when you listen to them? So we're talking about developing a habit, a habit of self-knowledge, a habit of self-empathy, being curious about and interested in what's going on here. And we're talking about a habit of being curious about other people, having empathy for other people. Not necessarily agreement, not condoning anything that you don't condone, not liking what you don't like, but having the capacity to be curious even when there's difference and difficulty and conflict and having a willingness to tell yourself the truth about what you're experiencing in situations where you have the opportunity to connect more with someone, but you're choosing not to. Okay, your choice. Can you be honest with yourself about why that is? There's conflict and there's fighting. You're part of the fight. Fighting can only happen with you being part of the fight. Are you willing to look at why that is? How are you bringing your part of the fight? So this is a journey of self-discovery. It's a journey of discovery of others. It's something that requires study, something that requires practice, something that requires contemplation, and something that pays you back for whatever time and effort you put into it. We're talking about in some ways, this is likened to learning another language. If you were learning Portuguese or Mandarin or whatever other language, it would take study and practice. So we're talking about an endeavor that is somewhat like learning a language, hopefully not as time consuming as that, and yet still something that requires a seriousness and a dedication and a willingness to make change where what you're currently doing is really not serving you. So much of an effective communication is simply habitual. It's habitual. It's what people have done so far and seen others do around them. And so they continue to do it. And that can be changed, thankfully. So I hope that I'm encouraging you in the sense of seeing at least what I'm suggesting is possible through this. You can only find out by trying it yourself, of course. And I also hope that I'm being honest with you about the fact that to really get the kind of value from this work that is possible, it does take a certain degree of seriousness, so to speak, although hopefully it can be a fun practice too. And a certain amount of energy, a certain amount of time. And the beautiful thing is, through the power of the internet, so many ways of learning are available to us now. So if this is a journey that you want to take, then I'm very happy for you. And I hope that I can support you on that journey. Thank you.